Good morning, Mount Gilead family. How are you all doing this morning? I hope you are all well. Uh, my name is Nick Hitter, and I am one of the student ministers here at Mount Gilead. And today I'm excited to share with you all, um, but I, I will admit today I'm going to be talking about something that isn't um, the easiest to talk about, and that is sin. Um, today I want to talk about sin because it's something that's kind of been on my heart recently. Um, in thinking through how we react to sin and how sin plays out in our lives, because we all know, uh, based on Scripture, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know that each and every one of us struggles um, with sin. We have to fight against sin on a daily basis. It is not something uh, that comes every great once in a while. It is something that is out there and is, uh, it is difficult for pretty much everybody. Everybody struggles with sin. And today, I want to talk about how we respond to sin. But before I do that, um, I want to get into sort of how sin takes a hold of our lives and can have an effect on us on a daily basis and as time progresses. In uh, When I was a, the children's minister here, I would teach this Kids Splash Baptism class. And we would do this demonstration about sin and what it does to our lives and how it can have an effect on us. And what we would do during the demonstration is very simple. We would take iodine, which is sort of an orangish tint, and we would make a mark on your arm, and you could see it there. It would be just a mark right on your arm, and be like, that is sin. You can notice it, you see it, and as you sin, it's right there. But then we would take the iodine, and we would begin to make more marks. And you would begin to see it starts to blend in with the skin, and it starts to become a part of who we are. And we really start to re stop realizing that there is something different about us, that that sin is living in our hearts and living in our minds. And then what we would do to show um, sort of what God sees is we would spray that iodine with starch, and it would turn this dark purple and black color, and it would bubble up, and it would just look disgusting. And we would explain how that is what God sees as sin. That's what he sees on our hearts as we are living lives in sin. But what I want to go back to is this idea of sinning and not recognizing it. The more and more we sin, the harder it becomes to recognize that we're sinning. If we don't acknowledge that we are sinning uh, when we do sin, do we even view it as sin anymore? If we aren't actively seeking out forgiveness for our sins, are we simply trying to hide them away from God? And these are some of the things that I've been thinking about in processing and dealing with how we respond to sin. And I found this beautiful passage in Psalm 32 uh, written by David about sin and sort of his own um, struggle with sin. So I'm going to read this for us today. Um, and I just want you to hear these words. It begins in verse 1. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute antiquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away. Through my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. Selah, I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity. I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose trappings include bit and brittle to hold them in check. Otherwise they will not come near to you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness, shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you, O righteous ones. 
and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. This passage is so beautiful, and I love what David says at the beginning, talking about how great it is to have our sins forgiven, to acknowledge our sins, and to have those sins covered up by God. But then he talks about when he hid his sin from God in verses 3 and 4. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. This is what it was like for David to keep his sin hidden from God. This is what it did to him. And in some ways, even though we may not feel it like David expresses here, even though we may not be able to acknowledge it like David does here in Psalm 32, when we hide our sin from God, when we don't acknowledge our sin before him, it begins to do these things to us. It begins to sap us of our vitality. Our bodies begin to waste away because we are living in sin. And so I want to look at how to respond to sin. Because if we're sinning and we're not responding to it, then we're trying to hide our sin. Or we're not acknowledging our sin. And if we don't acknowledge sin, and if we aren't responding to sin, then how are we going to fight against sin? How are we going to move forward and move away from sin? And that's what David says. Here's his response to sin in verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And that right there is a perfect picture of, of what we are called to do in response to sin. We are called very simply to confess our sins to God. If after we sin, we go to God immediately and we confess our sins to him, we are acknowledging our sins. We are being forgiven of our sins. But in acknowledging our sins, we are winning the fight against sin. If we don't acknowledge it, sin is winning the fight against us. But if we acknowledge our sin and we ask for forgiveness, we are saying, I have sinned. We are taking that guilt and that understanding of what we've done wrong, and we are laying it before God and saying it plain. And in that, even though it's hard, and even though we have sinned, we have done wrong, we are still winning the fight against sin through acknowledging that and through asking for forgiveness. So that's kind of what I want to leave you guys with. I want to encourage you that as we go through life, we will sin. Um, but a part of winning the fight against sin, a part of responding to sin, is admitting that sin. It is responding to that sin in a way that we ask for forgiveness, in a way that we admit our sin and go to God. And through that, we will be forgiven. And through that, we will acknowledge our sin. And hopefully from that, we can move forward and continue to fight against those sins even better through acknowledging them and understanding um, what it is that makes us sin. And we always know that God is there and he forgives us. And that's why I love the end of Psalm 32. And I'm just going to end with this and a prayer today. Um, verse 11 of Psalm 32, the last verse. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. And shout for joy, all who are upright in heart. Even as we sin, even as we go through these things, we can rejoice in a God who always forgives us, who always loves us, who always cares for us. And that God loves us so much, he calls us the righteous ones. We can shout for joy because we have been upright in heart and we have um, worked hard to follow him. We've worked hard to acknowledge our sins before him. So I hope this was encouraging for you all this morning. I hope... Um, that we can continue to strive against sin and uh, to work against that. Will you guys pray with me as uh, we begin our days today? Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for being a God who always forgives us, who always loves us, who always uh, cares for us and is always there and listening, Lord. Lord, help us today to acknowledge our sins before you. Help us... Um, to continue to strive to fight against sin and to not hide our sins from you, Lord. Help us to live in the truth and not to sin. Be with us this day. Uh, be with those who are hurting and those who need you right now, Lord. 
um, care for them and show them your love in all things. And I just pray that they can be seen and know you. Lord, we love you, and it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday. I will probably see you guys next week. Have a great day.